Hi, I'm Barrett Caldwell, Professor of Industrial Engineering and Aeronautics and Astronautics. Welcome to my office hours. Come on in. All right, Professor Caldwell, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing well today. Uh, it's gloomy weather outside, but uh, let's start with some fun conversation. So let's start with the, the easy question first. All right. What's up with the bears? <laughs> I've seen four, maybe five or on the room. My, my name, Barrett, um, means bear. Okay. It is an old German reference to bear-like, and it was just a name that my mother really enjoyed and really liked. I've been described as having a bear-like personality, everything from being very protective of my kids, my students, um, those who are close to me, and also because um, I like to hibernate in the winter. I from that you're from uh, Philadelphia, and what would you say was the most fun part about being a Philadelphia native? So I, I was born in the city of Philadelphia, lived within the city limits until I was seven, and then moved to one of the neighborhood suburbs just on the other side of the city line. Um, I would say that it was not as much fun being from Philadelphia at that time period. Um, but I think one of the things that I most appreciate about being from Philadelphia is that it is such a center for history, um, not just social history, political history with the revolution, but also the history of technology, the history of social and technical policy. Would you say that guided you towards your uh, career in engineering or your, 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 I would say, your journey towards you know, aerospace engineering? My father was a car salesman. And we used to joke because my birthday falls in late September, which is about when the new model year um, is released every year. So every year he would take me to the Chevrolet dealership where he worked and I would watch the new model year cars coming off of the, of the trailers. And so I got to learn about new car models and then got in, interested in the history of auto, automobile. Uh, technology and um, basically that element of engineering was sort of my first exposure and then my next exposure was being fascinated with the Apollo moonshots and so with Apollo 8 uh, uh, you know lots of other kids were staying up on Christmas Eve uh, 1968 I guess it was um, looking for uh, Santa I didn't care about Santa I wanted to watch the uh, the video broadcast from the astronauts uh, orbiting the moon. You did a, a bachelor's, correct me if I'm wrong, a bachelor's in aerospace, and then you also did a bachelor's in humanities. You did a master's in, and a mm -hmm. PhD uh, in psychology. Mm -hmm. So what made you take this sort of unconventional path? I didn't realize that it was a unique skill set. I didn't know how unusual it would be to want to do things that not that many other people have done, but being an African-American in engineering, I'm doing something that not that many people have done. Working in spaceflight and the human aspects of spaceflight, when we had only had maybe 30 or 40 US astronauts total? No, I, I just said, that's what I want to do. Um, that's what the future looks like to me. I want to go explore that future. While we're still on the topic of college, what was the hardest class for you in your time? As a sophomore, my aerodynamics uh, quiz uh, involved something about flow over a semi-cylindrical Quonset hut cross-section. I got a 6 out of 50 on the quiz, and ever since then my feeling was um, Monsieur Bernoulli and I are not good friends. He took me out behind the Quonset hut and hurt me real, real bad. I see, but it's good to know that you and I had similar issues in college. Just because uh, that your professor is there very good um, at their favorite thing, which is usually what they're teaching, um, that doesn't mean every aspect of engineering comes easily to me. We've talked a lot about Purdue, we've talked a lot about engineering, we've talked a lot about your journey. Let's talk about baseball. Okay. What are the Phillies to you? My first Philadelphia Phillies baseball game was in the 1960s in Connie Mack Stadium. My mother grew up, um, she lived for maybe 10, 15 years 
about six blocks from Connie Mack Stadium. Until she died, she would listen to every game on the radio. My father started taking me to Philadelphia Eagles games in the 1960s when they were playing at Franklin Field. I remember going to a game with Leroy Keyes as a rookie second year player for the Eagles. I didn't know where he went to college, but I knew that he was playing for the Eagles. So for me, being an Eagles fan, a Phillies fan, is part of the experience of being from Philadelphia. From what I've read, you've been a consistent presence with a diversity and uh, equity and inclusion at Purdue. What would you say is the importance and the value of mentoring and supporting people from diverse groups? When I was a little kid and said I wanted to be an astronaut, you can't be an astronaut, you're black. I wanted to be an engineer. You can't be an engineer, you're black. The melanin in my skin has nothing to do with my intellectual capability. The body parts that I might have have nothing to do with my intellectual capability. Whom I love has nothing to do with my intellectual capability. As it turns out, there were black engineers when I was saying I wanted to be an engineer. There were black astronauts or astronaut candidates. My own parents didn't know about these people so I couldn't use them as role models. I am extremely fortunate that I didn't need to see a role model that looked like me in order to be brave, foolish, intense enough to pursue my own path. There are less than 300 black full professors in all fields of engineering in the United States. African-American full professors, less than 300. Whether or not I wish to be, I'm feeling like Charles Barkley right now. I am a role model. I am an existence proof. And that's what I've wanted to do in a lot of ways with my career. It's more powerful than I ever expected it to be, to be an existence proof. What would you say is one thing you'd maybe show sure, I'd like to tell other students or other people in general who are, maybe don't see a role model that fits their uh, uh, that fits their profile but they still want to make it to that path they will still want to achieve those dreams and be that like you said uh, existence proof being able to have the the faith have the uh, drive and the passion to keep going even when it's hard, uh, maybe especially when it's hard, is extremely important. And I hope that uh, people can gain some of that from my experience. I think the other thing is um, I'm a very intense person. I'm a very passionate person. I'm far more complex than it might look on the surface. Unless you talk to me, you don't know that. So. For, Students seem to be afraid to bother professors. I'm a professor because that's what I seem to be put here to do. If I didn't want to mentor students, if I didn't want to engage in turning on the light bulb, I'd be at a research lab. Or I'd be in the corporate world. Being a university professor is probably the best demonstration and the best integration of my skills and passions. But you don't know that unless you ask me.